the Lobos this year. Tip goes through the hands of Shornstein right to David Gibson. We'll be keeping a close eye on what kind of defense UTEP Miners use because they do like to mix it up now. They've been playing quite a bit of zone this year, but they're starting out tonight man-to-man. -man. Look for the Lobos to try and get the ball as of late later to Kenny Thomas. Being guarded inside by JoJo Garcia. Shot clock at 13. Double team. We're going to have a charge on Kenny Thomas. They'll say he bumped right into Carl Davis. I thought Davis got over there a little late. The whistle and the foul. Well, the main thing is there was almost no contact here. You'll see Kenny get the ball. Not much contact at all. The players are going to start doing that to Kenny because they know he's one of the keys to the Lobos game right now. Kenny Thomas, first personal, just 27 seconds into the ball game. Lobos come out man to man. Imani Jones Young with the ball. He wears number 13. Kevin Beal inside, Shornstein on him. Garcia pulls up and hits the long two-pointer. Well, whenever a center can go outside and hit the 15, 17-footer, it causes Kenny Thomas some problems. There's Shornstein again. at 22 points at Colorado State. And here at the special event center on their feet. Miners up 2 nothing. Shields is open. He's been hot from three-point range. Not that time. Garcia gets the rebound. I don't know how Clayton got so wide open that time. I think he was even a little surprised, Mike. Jones Young with it. They go to Garcia again. Right into the face of Thomas, who got smacked with an elbow on the jaw, grimacing as he goes back the other way. Charles Smith dribbles it off his knee. That's Shortstein. Well, short. And the Lobos ragged to get this thing going. If Kenny would have fallen down whenever JoJo hit him, I think they would have called a foul. They might have. It was right in front of the official. Garcia well, looks very confident out there. Amani Jones Young, yes. That was right in front of us. We looked good the entire way. Coach Bliss calling out Coast right now. And last time we had a broadcast of EPM 50, the Lobos fell behind 19 to 5 to the Wyoming Cowboys. Shields in the corner. Paul Smith, very difficult shot. No good. Another rebound for UTEP. This time it's Carl Davis. Mark Ingalls, three pointer. 8 nothing already. The Miners have taken the lead. Well, Lobos need to work some cloth and get a good shot this time. That was not a good shot by Spider Smith the last time. Dave Blitz wants a 20-second timeout, a good timeout. 17-14 left in the first half. Well, what's going on here? The Lobos have gotten a good shot by Clayton Shields, wide-open shot by Shorty. They've missed both of those. Offensive foul on Kenny Thomas, and their defense is just not being as crisp, and they're giving the Miners good shots, and they're hitting them. As Dave Bliss goes back to the huddle, I don't think there was any technical assistance in that timeout. I think it was just get your butts in gear, guys. That's right. Here, anything to try and break a momentum. Coaches really like to try and use that 20-second time in for that purpose. Well, it's only wanted to check in, got there a little bit late. Out here chanting defense. Charles Smith loses the ball. Good hands by Engel. Got to stay on him because he'll drain it. Kamani Jones Young. And good help by Shields, but Ingles broke free in and out. And we'll call a foul on JoJo Garcia. Not much contact on that one, and we'll go the other way. Looks like the refs are kind of settling into this game also. Only will come in and Clayton Shields will take a break. New Mexico now 0 of 3. UTEP is three of five. Two of those three-point buckets by the Miners. Eight nothing, UTEP leads it. Royce Olney wearing number 30. Gibson baseline. Olney will try to break out of a slump and can't quite do it. 
Lobos have had two that have stayed up there quite a while. Royce has missed eight straight three-pointers, and Kamani Jones Young hits another one. It's 11-0. Well, the Lobos, whenever they've been in a shooting slump, their defense has held them tight. They're not playing good defense right now. Smith baseline, and we'll have a blocking foul on the minor. Well, there's one thing, Mike, if you have a fast break. There's another thing is whenever you just don't find your man and get into him as he's dribbling the ball up. And goes with a little bit of a body, putting the knee on in there. Back to live action now. Who will break the slump? For New Mexico, there's only again corner. Kenny Thomas has touched the ball just once. Gibson throws it away. Carl Davis. Engel sets up. Boy, I'll tell you, the Miners are getting wide open shots. And they're getting the bounces. 14-0 Utah. Well, the good news is this game's a lot of time left. Just four minutes, 30 seconds in. Lost the ball. Another turnover. You kept pushing it up. Inside. Ingles will bring it back. Over the rim, and the Lobos get the defensive ball. Difficult shot, and he scores. Royce Olney. That's the most difficult shot the Lobos have taken tonight, uh, and it falls. But I like the way Royce did it. He wasn't going to make that shot. He was going to draw the foul. He wanted on the free throw line. That is a good way to break a major drought. And there you see Royce forcing the contact and then still being able to hit that shot. First foul on Carl Davis, and only makes the free throw. And we're going to have a timeout. 15-14 to go first half. The Lobos are on the board on the strength of four three-pointers leads New Mexico 14 to three. The most three-pointers by a team this year against the Lobos, nine by Dartmouth by a whack opponent, Fresno State hit the Lobos for seven. And the Lobos with just the one bucket so far. You tip off to a good sh start shooting. And part of that good shooting is because New Mexico has four turnovers. UTEP none and, the low, and UTEP has converted those turnovers into five points. Well, if the Lobos are going to get back into this, they need to start at the defensive end. Jojo Garcia out top of the circle. Carl Davis sets up wide open. And there's Schoenstein. Lobos dodge a bullet there because Davis uh, had a freebie. It's a little one-on-one -on -one with Davis. Schoenstein out of control inside and loses it again. Turnover number five. The Lobos were running a play that time, a set play, and uh, I think the Lobos are running two different plays. I think they're trying to set up uh, Charles Smith in the corner. That's Beal with it. This time, now they'll go one on one inside the lane. No good. Fight for the rebound. That's off the Utah mine. Off Kevin Beal, the Lobos will play it in. I think that first foul that Kenny got uh, kind of shocked Kenny a little bit, or at least has him stunned. I mean, he's not playing real aggressive right now. He's not. In fact, he's walking down the court to right now. His eyes closed for a minute. I think this whole thing is a little bit overwhelming, returning to El Paso. Another foul on the UTEP Miners. And that's four team fouls now. For Jones Young, that's his first. Playing good defense in the first half. Charles Spider Smith. Only. Teams have done a good job defensing Smith during the whack. They're also keeping him off the free throw line. Inside hands to Thomas, and we're going to have a we'll have a uh, held ball. Kenny had trouble hanging on to that. He's got tape around two of his fingers on his right hand side, and watch him lose control of it initially, right there. And then a little bit uh, over the back. But it's the possession arrow to the UTEP mine. The Lobos defense are picking up a little and also UTEP cooling down. They've missed some open shots, but the Lobos offense still struggling. Going 
going inside. Here's Ingles, good shooter. Shot clock down to 12. Carl Davis sees it out front, and he'll do a little one-on-one. -on -one. Gets by Gibson, back out corner. That's Jones Young. He knows. Yeah, I think Gibson go right there. Thomas got away with a foul. Jojo Garcia has a word to David Hall. Yeah, and he got away with that one there. Uh, Kenny got up in the air that time, and uh, there was a little contact, but if Jojo had jumped into Kenny, probably would have been Kenny's second foul. Got a look there at Don Haskins. 35th year here coaching the UTEP Miners. After Sean Stein, a little give and go, and only his foul will go to the line for two, and he comes up grimacing, holding his eye. If you can hold your eye, touch on the eye. Jones Young on the foul. Look here. Royce beats him there, beats him to the hole, and Royce does a good job. If he had jumped straight, it would have just been a block, but he did a good job of forcing the contact. Number two on Jones Young. 12.48 to go first half. The Lobos with just three points. Royce has them all, and he has a chance to uh, at least continue to nip at the league. I mean, the Miners have been stuck on 14 for quite some time, Mike. Gets the second one, and Royce is a guy that the Bear wanted uh, pretty bad. He uh, came down to New Mexico and UTEP for Royce only services. He chose the Lobos. Gibson on the foul out front. David doesn't like it. His first. And that will be the second team foul on New Mexico. Dave Bliss went to the bench early with uh, Royce Alney, and he has not made a substitution since. That's Gibson Alney, Charles Smith, Greg Shornstein, and Kenny Thomas for New Mexico. Near steal by New Mexico. Jojo Garcia. Fight for the rebound. Scramble. And they're going to call that one. They called that one and they missed the first one. Well, from our angle, it looks like there was just no contact there. But I tell you, Lobos got hurt when they lost this offensive rebound. Let's see it. Shorty, he's got inside position. But he just doesn't put his body on. You couldn't see there. Here's but Kevin Beal, yeah. yeah. But it didn't look like... Uh, Contact, but the call, and now UTEP lengthens its lead. It's 17 to 4. Coach Bliss not making a move to take Thomas out of the game either. Oh, number two on Kenny Thomas. Little late looking for Thomas. Needs to be careful. Now he'll go inside. This is the short one. Good defense by Garcia. That was a good take by Kenny Thomas, so that's what you want. Take it directly to the hole. And I believe that was his first shot since he picked up that foul within the first minute. Santiago yes, getting ready to come in for Thomas, presumably. It's the first time the Lobos have gotten the ball on the block. And we're going to have an offensive foul on Kevin Beal driving against Thornstein. And we'll have a timeout, 11.44 to go. As we head to the break, take a look at the replay now. The Lobos trailing the Miners by a score of 17-4. We'll be back after this. It's professional baseball. The Colorado Rockies on UPN 50. Watch for more details. And it's Lobo basketball on UPN 50. Lobos trail at 17 to 4, one of six from the field. The starters have yet to score a point for New Mexico. Jeff Spiller checking into the game for the Miners. They're still very short out there. Santiago in for Thomas. Clayton Shields has returned for New Mexico as Charles Smith takes a break. Good setup to Shields, who just checked in a little short. And it goes back out to Alden. Santiago working inside. Quite a battle in there against Sharif Ardo. And New Mexico finally scores again. Finally gets an easy shot. Clayton Shields broke free with all the confusion that Santiago was causing. 17-6. The Lobos down by 11. Also in Jeremy Primozic. Native El Pasoan. They tried to feed it inside to him, and Shornstein batted it out. Cross court to Gibson. Quick feed. 
and he can't get it to go. That's the way it's been for the Lobos. And we're going to have a foul on Clayton Shields. Nice move by David Gibson here. Spiller sets up to take the charge. David just sprints around him. You see David, I don't know if you saw down the bottom of the screen, his feet got caught up there and made him lose his balance. Yeah, he was unable to go up. Instead, he, he went more out. And this is the shot. Here's Spiller now. He's a junior from Scottsdale, Arizona, 5'7", 155 pounds. He was a walk-on who started. I thought that was a double dribble. And instead, Joe Jones hits the runner. For Jones Young, eight points. The lead is up to 19-6. Shields will try it again. Big one. Big one for New Mexico. Their first three-pointer, and now it's 19-9. Uh, Mike, Lobo's doing a better job of attacking the bucket, making two minors guard one Lobo, and then making the kick and getting the wide-open shots. They just need to start making them. A lot of that is Royce Olden. Bremizic. The Spiller. Oh, good little feed there to Fajardo, who has it blocked, out of bounds, and it's Utex ball. I believe that was Shornstein with the block. I'd like to say that Shorty skied to get that block, but that one was right there in front of him. Good job. Lobos are picking their intensity up right there. Zone on the inbounds, and we're going to have a foul in New Mexico, and I think it's Santiago. Now the foul situation is evening up a bit. Yeah. Six foul on the Lobos. And that's the first on Daniel. The same play. Fajardo lost it this time. Outlet here to Shortstein. From behind. And he misses the chippy. Well, avoided the charge, but that's just half of it. you got to go ahead and finish the play. Ten-point UTEP lead, under ten minutes to go in the half. Ingles at 6-2, being guarded by the 6-7 Shields. Kermizic fakes. Carl Davis way out front. Shot clock down to 11. Last time in this situation, Davis got the roll. Double team, Ingles set free. Three point try off the back of the iron. The Dr. Shield. Clayton is a lot more active, I think, in this game. Going time. Back out to Gibson. Thomas remains on the bench. New Mexico throws it away. Lobos have had their chances again, Nelson, the last uh, four or five minutes. Fajardo fakes, spinning. Spiller can hit that, but not that time. Hit three and three against San Diego State. Only looking for some help. Shields, three-pointer. Battle for the rebound. And they'll say that Shorenstein came out of bounds back in to get the ball. I thought he had his feet back in before he did that, though. Well, maybe the replay will show. Let's take a look. Good hustle there. Well, it did show. 8-3, <laughs> New Mexico continues to have problems with those turnovers. The last couple have at least been aggressive. They're trying to you know, get the ball inside earlier. The uh, turnovers were just called by you know, weak passes or just outright steals by Utah. Mexico is just nine points in the game with a little over eight minutes left in the half. Kenny Thomas has returned for Santiago. And Kavasi Franklin also in the game. Spiller left alone. Not that time. And Thomas loses it. Well, that was just Kenny in the ball, and uh, he wasn't able to come up with it. He's had, it's, it's frustrating right now for Kenny. He's got to shake this because the Lobos need him. Only on Spiller. Kenny Thomas playing with two fouls. Who will get it? And again, the Miners get the offensive rebound. Kamani Jones young, and the Lobos are getting some breaks now that the Miners have gotten cold. Franklin needs some help. And he 
picks up his dribble. Kenny Thomas now, a rare opportunity, faking, and that's way too high. Well, Kenny, he was open after one move, but he wanted to put an extra move on. Well, it's still 19-9. UTEP leads it with 7-13 to go first half. Global Basketball on UPN 50 is brought to you by AutoZone. In South Dallas, a lot of folks like to work in their cars, and a lot of them come to AutoZone. They save money on top quality parts, and they find helpful people like Rocky Brown. Oh, sure, there are other people. And he'll go to the line for two, only, let's see, Beal, a 67% free throw shooter, not too bad. Not going to win any contest shooting 67%. No. Beal is a senior from Los Angeles, went to Long Beach Community College. First one is short. Well, folks, I know it's been a little bit uh, hard to watch this first half if you're a Lobo fan, but it will get better. Lobo shooting 25%. The Miners, Mike, they're just shooting 33%. Lobos are coming out their uh, worst shooting game of the season. Back door, nobody there. Shields was looking for Charles Smith. Well, the pass, it was very straight. You know? <laughs> yeah, we were listening to Dave Bliss there as uh, Don Haskins calls a 20-second timeout. I think uh, Charles buried a little bit from the play that was planned, and that may have cause that turnover there. Now, whenever you have a receiver that, you know, runs a different route, a quarterbacks get mad. Also in the Western Athletic Conference tonight, Colorado State is at BYU, and in the first half, CSU was leading at 37-34. Later, it's Hawaii at Fresno State. No report yet on San Diego State at Air Force and Wyoming at Utah. I suppose, besides this game, the key game of the conference tonight is Colorado State at BYU. Yeah, I agree with you. Mike, another thing is, you know, New Mexico, they have a bigger lineup out there. They have some leapers, and they're getting out-rebounded 13-11 to 11 right now. Uh, and that, that's effort. And the Lobos need to go after the ball. There's been a lot of missed shots. Go get them. Garcia inside. He'll go again. This time, Kenny Thomas gets the steal. UNM has not scored since the 10-15 mark. UTEP not since the 10-29 mark, and we're at a 6-15 and counting. Charles Smith with it. Charles has yet to score, and that'll be off the mark. And Shield saves it nicely. Only back of the iron. Good stretch by Kenny Thomas. Well, when you're shooting 25%, the Lobos need to get four shots each time down to get one to go down. Fresh shot clock. Only has hit one of his last 11 three-point tries. Smith, a little one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, he's pushed. And they'll say he traveled. They'll say he traveled no basket. You can't buy a break tonight. Uh, that, that's, a, that's a difficult call there. Feet are planted. They really are. Five forty-three to go, first half. Nineteen to nine. UTEP leads it. Well, that would have been, you know, a possible three-point bucket, but the Lobos got to shake it off. I mean, they're not behind because of the refs. Absolutely not. Garcia, they're looking for him inside. They're trying to pick up that third on Kenny Thomas. Kamani Jones, young, double teamed. Carl Davis, Tomahawk, that one through. Davis with six points, 22-9. Well, it, it was big, Mike, to see which team was going to break out of the slump first. The Lobos needed to do it. Kenny Thomas, he'll go inside, throws it up, can't get that either. Shields with five, only with four, and that's it for New Mexico. We want to go inside to Garcia again. Good. And 
you can see Kenny Thomas back off, not being aggressive. And that was a difficult shot by Jojo Garcia, too. 24-9 our score. Garcia with seven. Inside, and it's David Gibson. So that ends the long New Mexico drought. It's now 24-11. One of the things the Lobos ought to focus on, they're not going to catch up in one trip, but if they could cut it below double digits by half, that'd be good. Down by 13 right now. And we're going to have a foul, and that's on Jojo Garcia with the push, his third. And... Uh, Forgive me if you think I'm some sort of optimist, but I think the Lobos are in okay shape. I mean, they're down 13 and played lousy in the half. Uh, four minutes to go, and, you know, some things have gone their way, and it could be worse. I really think the Lobos are going to make a bit of a run here before the end of the half. Well, the Lobos are going to start playing better. And, Mike, I think I may have given you a wrong number. That may have just been Jojo Garcia's second foul. Okay, that's what they have up on the board. And Thomas gets on the board his first. There's a smattering of applause here. Quite a few Lobo fans here as usual. And Thomas gets them both. Maybe that'll get Penny on track. 24-13, an 11-point game. Rinizic back in. Working it around to Engels. Carl Davis. Both teams playing man-to-man -man all of the first half so far. Well, that's a little surprising for the Miners. Shot clock down to nine. Carl Davis with it. He needs to put it up. Instead, he touches the baseline, and the Lobo scores the turnover. Uh, that's probably New Mexico's best defensive stand this half. Media timeout, 3.30 to go. The Miners lead at 24-13. Stay with us. Lobos have been able to put points on the board this year, first or third or second in the whack in all these categories, yet lately, including tonight, they just haven't been able to buy a basket. We had several roll out. To start the game, Mike, they were not getting good shots. 24-13 hour score, 323 left first half at UTEP. Carl Smith tries to get on track. That's Ingles with it. He'll pull up. And the rebound to David Gibson will go back the other way. So Gibson now will go back the other way to shoot one and one. Sharif Fajardo with that foul. Uh, the Lobos have benefited from uh, free throws as of late. One thing about David Gibson, he can go to the glass. He's a, he's a very good athlete. He gets the foul right there. David Hall with the call. David Hall with the call. I like that. <laughs> you do? Schornstein rips it free. Fakes. No whistle on that. And Schornstein complains coming down. Here's Carl Davis. Well, there was a whistle. There just wasn't any air being blown into it. Davis will pull up and hit. Big turnaround right there. It's now 26-13. The Miners have doubled the Lobos score. Well, when you're not playing well, it looks like a lot of the calls are going yeah. against you. Smith keeps his pivot foot. Dornstein inside. Kenny Thomas. And they'll say there's a foul before the shot. And maybe a makeup call there. I don't know. But Kenny Thomas will get the one and one. The contact occurred kind of on the shot. <laughs> yeah. This is the front end. Thomas with just two points, no field goal. Now Gibson and Thomas missing the front end of those two one and ones. Those basically end up being turnovers. Sprimizic with it. Carl Davis in the paint. High arching shot. Not that time. Kenny Thomas high for the rebound. Two minutes to go. First half. 
Smith, baseline, hangs in the air, Colney, no good, Thomas tries to save it and can't. I got, Kenny got away with a foul that time, uh, early on I saw a body come flying out of there. Now Marty Cotwright will come in and replace Kenny Thomas, trying to preserve the foul situation. New Mexico, 4 of 19, 21%. They were 25%. We thought there was no place to go but up, but we were wrong. Miner's using a little bit of clock right now. Ingles and Olney. Good help by Shornstein, and Ingles puts it in anyway. Five points now for Mark Ingles, senior out of Arizona. It's 28-13. The loaded Lobo's lowest point total in the first half this year is 27. Very frustrated group out there. Cotwright needs to be careful. Charles Smith. Olney will go inside, has it batted out. Primozic with the block. Ingles, alley-oop. Good hands by Carl Davis. I'm not sure he was throwing that to Davis, but New Mexico, they had a chance to cut it to below double digits on two different trips. Didn't get it done, and momentum has shifted big time towards the minors. 17-point UTEP lead, their biggest. Charles Smith inside the cot right. He'll put it in off the window. Shornstein hasn't scored, Smith hasn't scored, but Cotwright gets into the book. The wacky whack. Well, it's been that way this year. 30-15 our score, UTEP up, they will play the clock down. There's about a six second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. It's Beal with it. Angles in the lane, shot clock down to 10. Davis picks up his dribble. Beal now. Five seconds. Shot clock. Tip back out. Lobos will have a chance with six seconds left. Smith will take a three-pointer and hits it. Charles Smith hits it. And that will end the half. And that's a little momentum for the Lobos as they go to the break down by 12. Our score at the half, UTEP 30, New Mexico 18. Stay with us. We'll take a look back at the first half of play when we, we return to the Special Events Center after this. After the UTEP Miners, 30 to 18. Hello again, everybody. Mike Powers along with Nelson France. And the Lobos survived the first half, I think, but barely. That's right. I mean, they're lucky. The Miners only scored 30 points. The Miners, Mike, are averaging 75 points a game. They had to put up half of that, 37. The Lobos have really have dug themselves a hole. Charles Smith, uh, I guess a five-point turnaround to end the first half. Utah misses. Charles Smith takes it down and hits a three-pointer. And a what do you say at halftime after something like that? You, 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 you say, hey, we're still in this thing. I think that's what you have to do. You yeah. have to try and look on the positive because right now, I mean, the Lobos were a little shell-shocked to start the game. Uh, Lobos ended up putting Marty Cotwright in. He got the easy bucket, and he's the one that tipped the ball out. They got it to Spider Smith that led to the three points then. All right, so what's Dave Bliss saying at halftime? I mean, uh, or is he saying anything or just yelling? I mean, because there was a lot that went wrong, a lot to address in that first half. Yeah, and I think what he's going to do, you try to focus on a couple of the main things. I mean, one of the things is the Lobos need to run their offense and get better shots. Uh, the other thing is aggressiveness on defense and on the glass. Those two things, aggressiveness and run the offense, and that'll cure most of the problem. The standing ovation right now, uh, not for us, unfortunately. It's for the UTEP, uh, actually the Texas Western National Championship team of 1966. You know, it seems like every time we're here, they're honoring them or the Bear. So they do that, I'm sure, intentionally because this is such a big game. Yeah, and especially what a good choice because they've had a hard time selling out for games this year because the Miners slump they got into. So uh, good timing on their part. Well, it is a thrill to see some of these guys. Uh, really a legendary team back then, uh, winning the what the uh, national championship in that big game over Kentucky. Well, why don't we take a break? We will come back in just a moment. We'll have a chance, so we hope to talk to an NBA scout, and this may not have been the best game for him to see, but we'll get his impressions of the first half and some of the players out there. UTEP leads to Mexico by 12. 
50 continues. Joining us now is Ed Manning, a scout for the San Antonio Spurs in the NBA. Thanks for being with us, Ed. Uh, I appreciate it. Appreciate now, I you probably could have picked a better game, at least the first half, to see. <laughs> Well, uh, you have those kind of games, you know, when you, especially when you're on the road. It just seems like nothing is going for you. Uh, the guys that you and Jillian put the ball in the hole for you is, is, is just haven't got it going yet. Uh, the effort is there, and I feel like that, uh, you know, this will be a different second half. When you scout a team, I mean, do you come in here uh, looking for a certain player? Do you just come to see who maybe shows up to play? Well, uh, basically, I try to uh, catch all the players nowadays, you know, because they come out so early. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't uh, recommend that, but that's just the way it happens yeah. so far. But I try to come and especially check out all the uh, seniors because we know they're going to be in the draft. And, uh, you know, hopefully to get to see, I kind of take notes when I come. Uh, you see the freshmen, uh, sophomores, and junior take notes on the super yeah. players that they have and then yeah. just follow them all the way through and uh, kind of let you know what they're doing throughout each year. Now, I, I suppose the biggest name on the floor may be Kenny Thomas for New Mexico. I mean, do you know about a guy like that already as a freshman, a true freshman? Well, uh, you know, I know that I know that he's coming out of uh, high school. He was a super, super player, and um, it's just such a big step for a, a young man to come out in his first year. You know, make such an impact. But these guys are so, they, you know, they're they're real good, and he's a he had a great body. You know, uh, he's coordinated, uh, great hands around the basket. You know, he works on both ends and rebounds tough. You know, it just takes a, it's just a matter of time before, if he continues to work, he's going to be good. What about Charles Smith for New Mexico? He struggled lately, but he seems to have that kind of NBA body, too, kind of a slasher. Well, he's a slasher, um, athletic, can make a lot of things happen for this for his team, you know, and I look for him to be able to handle the ball. He's a good jumper, uh, can get his own shot, and it's just a matter of it just haven't been going in for yeah. him, but... He's taking some good shots, you know. You can tell guys have been used to them shooting different shots, you know. Uh, you can tell the guys that's used to taking certain shots, you know, and they just not falling for him. But I look for the second half for him to come back in out really fired up. You know, the, uh -huh. the, uh, the whole team is, is looking good. The effort is there. The ball is just, they're making a few mistakes. And, uh, and that's a part of it, though. Right. Before I let you go, I want to ask how your son uh, Danny's doing with the uh, Phoenix Sun. Well, Danny, he hasn't started playing yet, but right. he's uh, he's being uh, uh, looked at by his by his doctor. Uh, he's been working out a little bit, uh, and I look for him to be back by the end of the month. And uh, he feels like he can do it, and I tell him he can do it. I know uh, he can do it. But well, we wish him a lot of luck, and we wish you a lot of luck uh, too. Appreciate that, and I hope you guys uh, continue to have good luck the rest of the season. Keep everybody healthy. Okay, thanks very much. All right, Ed Manning, you. a scout with the San Antonio Spurs of the NBA. We will take another break, come back and take a look at some of the first half highlights and statistics. Charles Smith with the long three-pointer to give the Lobos a little bit of that uh, much-needed momentum as they enter the half, uh, trailing it 30-18. to 18. Scoring leaders, Clayton Shields with seven, not much after that. Kenny Thomas with two on a pair of free throws. For the UTEP Miners, it's Carl Davis leading the way with eight. Kamani Jones Young uh, with ten, rather. Kamani Jones Young with eight. And those were all early, I think, for Jones Young. And JoJo Garcia did a very good job as well. He did a good job. He hit the glass and he made a couple of difficult shots. Once Kenny was in foul trouble, it was hard for Thomas to guard him. Well, the uh, highlighted numbers are the big ones there. The field goal percentage is 27% for New Mexico in the first half. Also, look, UTEP, they've taken eight more shots than the Lobos. That's because of those turnovers. Ten to five there. Lobos need to take care of the basketball. Well, the Lobos will make a uh, switch to uh, start off the second half. Royce only will be in the lineup for Clayton Shields. We'll see how that all shakes down. Lobos down by 12 at the half. We're about ready to get that second half started. We'll be right back. Here's your wake-up call, nature love. UTEP leading New Mexico, 30-18 to 18 at the break. Elsewhere, look at that. Colorado State leading BYU in the second half, 60-51. to 51. Hawaii trails Fresno State by 9 at the half. High-scoring affair there. San Diego State trails at Air Force at the half. Air Force is playing pretty good coming off a win against Hawaii. And then also tonight, uh, Utah is uh, taking on Wyoming. We've received heard word that Don Haskins is sick and he may not come back in the second half. The UTEP coach. And we'll 
keep an eye out for that. There's the Bears empty seat. And Dave Bliss right now inquiring about uh, the Bear, I'm sure, before they get things started here. David Hall over there, the official. Coach Bliss is saying that's exactly what the Miners need is something else for them to really, you know, play hard for. The Bears not feeling good. Let's win one for him. Yeah. Possession arrow in favor of New Mexico, so the Lobos will play it in. And they give it to Gibson. Breaks the double team. And now they'll set things up. It's Gibson Shornstein on the Charles Smith and Kenny Thomas. Gibson drives in and lays it in. Nice job by David Gibson to start the second half. The lead is 10. That was all set up, Mike, by the pick and roll. Kenny coming out, setting the pick for Charles Smith, causing a problem as he rolled with the bucket. Set it up now for the Utah Miners. Kevin Beal with the ball. Kamani Jones Young was number 13. Jojo Garcia with the ball. Mark Ingles in the corner. And Carl Davis out in the top. Beal in the corner. I don't believe he wants that one. I don't think so. Carl Davis driving against Gibson. Good hands by David. Shot clock at three. The put-up shot, no good. Tipped out, Shornstein. Royce, corner. Shornstein for three. It'd be a big one, and it is. Well, there's a five-point start. I don't know how many minutes the Lobos played the first half until they scored five points, but it was quite a few. 30 to 23 our score. Royce only had his arms up for a three even before Shornstein shot it. Shornstein with three points now. Garcia in the lane. They'll throw it back out and try to reset them. Monty Jones Young fakes it and misses the easy one. Well, that was a good job of Kenny Thomas not going for the block. Smith, three pointer. Not that time. That would have been a big one. Lobos down by 17 at one point, have cut it to seven. Mark Ingalls answers. Well, that stopped the bleeding quickly, 33-23. But the Lobos seem a lot more aggressive and a lot more confident here to start the second half. I agree. Shortstein now. Offensive foul, Greg Shornstein. And we have another look at it coming up right here. Nice cut by Greg Shornstein. In that yeah. angle, it was tough to see how much contact you know, there was, but uh, the refs are calling the charges tonight. If you get any contact, you ought to go ahead and flop. Monty Jones Young is open. So the Lobos cut into it down to seven, and now it's back up to 13. And we'll have a hold out front on Carl Davis. Well, Mike, you remember the stretch, the Lobos had a chance to cut it in the lead the first half, and that was just because the Miners missed some wide open shots, and here in the second half, they've gotten some wide open shots and knocked them down. For Thomas, backside help. It's uh, out of bounds, but a foul on Kevin Beal. Now Beal got there a little late that time. A good pass. Kenny does a good job of holding off the defender. There you see it. Pass is perfect. And there you see late. Good call. Yep. 17-15 to go. Second half. Shortstein thought he had an opening. Here comes Charles inside, and he'll lay that one in. That's a better look at move by Charles going all the way. Well, his first step was so important. It was towards the bucket as opposed to across the elbow. Right, perpendicular there. That's the word I wanted, perpendicular. Not sure what it means. It just sounded good. Whoa, we're going to have a foul. Who will they call it on? And I believe it's Kenny Thomas. 
Well, that's one of the things. I mean, Kenny Thomas continues to make, you know, freshman mistakes. I mean, Kenny's playing hard right now, but uh, they're going to call that one on you. And that was a good call. Yeah, he stuck out the forearm, and Kamani Jones-Jung hit the deck. Three fouls from Kenny Thomas. His homecoming to El Paso has not been a good one. Goes up for it. Garcia. And off Thomas. Well, the, you know, Mike, when you're not playing very sharp, those balls, they just don't bounce your yeah. way. Miners ready to throw it in. Ingles off the inbound play. Shorts kept alive by the Miners. Still loose. And they're going to have a foul on David Gibson. So that'll be three team fouls on the low ball. And right now, New Mexico having trouble on the glass. Well, the have cut it to 11, and all of a sudden they can't get a defensive rebound here. David, you're going to see him dive into the group there. And they're going to call that. Alley oop oh. to Beal, no good. Good job by Shorty to block it. Miners again cut off the cutter. Smith for three. Two pointer. Make that a two pointer, put on the line. Bubbles are doing a good job of penetrating into the paint and avoiding the charge and hitting the open man. Smith with seven. In the first half, we said Shields had seven. Uh, that was corrected to five. David Gibson had two at the break. So they made uh, that correction. 15-43 counting left in the regulation. Shot clock winding down, just 10 seconds to go. Engel inside, blocked, and they'll call a goal tag. Thomas went up, and they'll say goaltending. No, no. They're going to call an offensive foul. There you see the offensive foul, Mike. Okay, uh, a break for New Mexico. 36-27 our score. Thank you for the help, Nelson. 15-34 left in the game. Coming up after the game on UPN 50, Robert Urick stars as the Lazarus man filmed in New Mexico with many New Mexicans playing the roles in the show. Coming up after the game. Our score here, UTEP leading 36-27 over the Lobos. New Mexico with the ball. Shooting has been a little bit better in the second half for the Lobos as they fight their way back into this thing. Uh, four of five, I'd say that's a lot better in the second half. Lobos leading in the paint, 2-12 to 10. Charles Smith pulls up, and he's starting to come on fire. Smith with nine. And the lead is seven. Well, you said they were going to pull back into this. Yeah, they were going to play better. There was no doubt about it. Mike Shields has returned. Greg Shornstein on the bench right now. Again, Don Haskins has left the building. Good move. Good move by Jojo Garcia. Haskins has the flu, and he will not return. G. Ray Johnson coaching in Haskins' stead tonight. Again, it's Charles Smith, and again he rattles it home. That's a three-pointer. Nice pick and roll once again. Kenny Thomas posting up and then sprinting out, setting the pick. Lobo's only down half a dozen. 38-32, Garcia misses. Shields is there with the rebound. Here we go, New Mexico. Shields goes inside, Thomas. Out of bounds, Kenny yelling at the ref. To no avail. And New Mexico will play it in. Kenny also giving the evil eye. Let's see it there. Well, got the ball first. I think that's probably a good call. Fields in the corner. Back to Smith. Charles has that look in his eye. Now they'll go to the big guy. And he loops it. Monty Jones Young. Oh, this is everything. And it comes all the way out to Kenny Thomas. Watch David Gibson. Shields, that's a three. Yeah, Clayton. 38-35. I'll tell you what, UTEP 
They're going to make a substitution. Wouldn't be surprised to see them take a 20-second timeout. Lobos have got things going their way. Mark Ingles with it. They're looking for Garcia. He'll take a long one. Oh, my goodness. What an answer that was. That was a three, and that's a shot. You know what? I mean, you might end up just letting Ingles have to take that. I mean, that was, that was big, and uh, I know... In hindsight, you don't want him to take it, but that was a long way No, you're way right. Way. That's a long way out. Somebody's got to be open. It's Kenny Thomas. He is hacked, and he'll score. Thomas pushes Garcia down, but that was well after the original foul. Now, let's see what happened. I don't think there was actually any contact by Kenny. He made the motion. They've now put a technical on Jojo Garcia. There's no doubt about that. The question is, did they put a technical on Kenny Thomas? If they did, it'll also be his fourth foul. We'll get a look at it firsthand. Howard Zuckerman and company doing a great job. There you see the very hard foul and yank down. And there and you see never, no contact. He never did push him. He wanted to, but by that time, Garcia was already down. They count the bucket. Kenny's going to get to shoot one free throw. And the refs never signal a technical. If they give Kenny a technical, it's going to be kind of just, well, we gave JoJo one because they never signaled a technical through all of that mess on Kenny Thomas. No, they didn't. The gentlemen in the stripes have had their conference. They're going to try to explain something. David Hall, Tom Harrington, Frank Fasoni. They have not put Kenny Thomas's two-pointer up on the board yet. Well, they had, they had it on there and they took it off. Everyone's kind of waiting, you know. What, what are the ballots going to be? They're going to let us vote on this? Now you can see they said the basket counts. Now they're calling Dave Bliss over and G. Ray Johnson. That's an intentional foul. Also the technical foul. Call on the Lobos number four, Kenny Thomas. Then we have offset technicals. We go to the Mexico Lobos number 22, Clayton Shields. And you touch number 50, Jojo Garcia. Each technical counts as a personal foul and as a team foul. And then we will go to alternate possession to decide who has the ball after everybody shoots free throws. Mike, a lot of makeups going on right there. A lot of makeups. What they did, they called an intentional foul on Jojo Garcia to start with. So not just a regular foul. Then they call a technical on Kenny Thomas. And then they call a technical on Jojo Garcia and Clayton Shields. I thought the original technical was on Jojo Garcia. That's what it looked like. Well, Mike, what happened, I think it's pretty clear. If you see the replay, the refs got together and kind of reinvented history. They got together and said, what makes sense here? How can we, you know, live with this situation the way we saw it? And, and that's what they did, because at the time, they had only called the one technical. It was clear, and that was on Jojo Garcia. So now there's going to be a lot of free throws. A lot of free throws. Let's take another look at it, Nelson, and, and see if we can make heads or tails about, about what happened. Here comes the intentional foul, and I think that's a good call. Okay, so normally New Mexico would get two free throws and the ball after that. So Kenny is going to get two free throws because of that. Because of the intentional foul. That's right. Such a, he's such a big time player. I, you know, who knows what's going to happen from here on in. But to go up there with this crowd in his hometown, booing him and yelling and hitting that first one and hitting them both and then looking into the crowd afterwards. You know, the worst thing about this whole thing, 
you know, the free throws, who knows how they're going to end up. But it's Kenny Thomas's fourth technical foul. That used to not fourth be the rule. Foul. Fourth personal foul, right. And now Ingles will go to the line to shoot. And I imagine he could, he'll get to shoot all four because there's two technicals. That's right. So this could be a big swing for the Miners. It just doesn't seem like it should play out that way. Well, then New Mexico's going to get a shoot. Right. Two more. Now they're going to go back down the other way. And only will get the technical fouls down here. And then I think they go back and UTEP shoots two more, too. When do we get the and shoot? And then you and I shoot two. I mean, that's the... And only misses the first one. But gets the second one. So the Lobos hit three of four. Now we're going back down and Ingles will get two more. And then will we jump it after that? No, it well, yes, except, you know, alternate possession. You okay. will get the ball. All right. Well... Lobo's got the better end of the free throw shooting anyway. Well, Kenny's two were the big ones. I mean, those were the ones. Well, after all that, it's 43-40. UTEP leads it. This is as close as New Mexico's been since 3-0. Or maybe it was 4-0 at that point. But, uh, but Kenny Thomas is on the bench now with four personal fouls. Marty caught right in for him. Let's see if the Lobos can keep their momentum. You need a stop here. This is what you need. Lobos had a little momentum before we had the big uh, scuttle there. To do. We'll call it the to do. Good hands by Gibson, but he can't keep it. Now that allows Ingles to break free, and he hits it. The three-point lead is now six. Gibson breaks free. And that's off Ingles. I thought David had a hole uh, to break right through to the glass. Well, I, I tell you what, the intensity out there has picked up. And that favors New Mexico because UTEP was already playing pretty intense uh, we saw in the first half. Artie Cotwright trying to post up inside. He needs to be active, get a rebound or two. Shot clock at 18, lots of time. Shields looking for help. Beal on him. And we're going to have a whistle and a foul on Beal. So Shields will shoot two. You know, and that was good with the shot clock winding down. The ball in Clayton's hands as opposed to uh, a true guard. Uh, him ending up with two free throws is a good result. Shields with eight tonight. Thomas with six. Charles Smith with 12. And that's Beal's third foul, Mike. Well, I've kind of lost count here. <laughs> Clayton, a 65% free throw shooter. And he should be shooting higher than that. And he gets the second one. The lead is now five. Here's Spiller. Gibson guards him. Mahardo. He's from New York City LaSalle High School. Just a freshman. Missed a couple of three-point tries in the first half. This first action in the second half. Wide open threes, too. Yeah. In the lane, Ingles, one-hander over Alden. He's the kind of shooter that can kill you. He yeah. really can. He's really a streaky shooter. When he gets his confidence going, he's tough to stop. He has 18. Good move by Royce. Draws the contact, but not quite enough on it, and he reaches in for the foul. There'll be a foul inside on New Mexico, and it'll be on Alden. That'll be one and one, I think, Mike, if that's the seventh foul. I believe it's just number six. They put him up real quick here on the board. Tabashi Franklin ready to come in. And we will have immediate timeouts. 
11.36 to go. It's been a wild one. Wild West show in El Paso. You tap up 48-41. This is America's Funniest Home Videos five nights a week on UPN 50. Watch a full hour of America's Funniest Moments caught on video each weeknight at 6 only on UPN 50. In El Paso, the Miners with the lead in the ball. Up 48-41 with 11.36 to go. Miners trying to win the three-game losing streak to get back into the WAC race. There's Beal. And we're going to have a foul on Marty Cotwright, so Beal will shoot two. Marty Cotwright's playing right now instead of Daniel Santiago. Any thoughts on that? For one, uh, Marty did a good job in the first half, made a couple of things happen. He matches up better. I mean, right now, um, with... Uh, Fajardo in the game, uh, he's not uh, a regular postman. He's right. someone who's a little more agile in the game. Beal's first one is good, and actually that was a pretty good foul by Marty, I thought. Jojo Garcia has four fouls. Uh, Beal has three fouls. Uh, Clayton Shields, three fouls. Kenny Thomas, four fouls. There's Kavasi Franklin. That's something he can do for you. He can get some rebounds. Played nine minutes at Colorado State. Played pretty well to help the Lobo cause there. That's Cavassi with the ball. Let's see if the Lobos can get something going again. And Shields now. Spinning. Has some room and lays it in. Lobos are spreading UTEP out right now. Trying to keep the middle open so the guards and guys like Shields can penetrate. 11 points for Shields. 49-43 UTEP. Spiller. Outside. Good job by Clayton again. Hey, Spiller, he was really looking for his shot. He was. I don't know if that's his job. Give and go. Cotwright. And Marty scores. Marty Cotwright with four. Nice little give and go there. I couldn't tell if Coach Bliss was standing if that was an actual screen and roll, but it looked pretty with a nice, nice end to it. 49-45. Four point. Separates these two teams. Hardo looking inside. Oh, left alone. Kamani Jones Young misses it. Out of bounds, and it's the Lobos playing it in. Carl Davis returns. And Ingles will sit. So the Lobos have a chance to cut it to two. Carl Davis, he was on the bench, and he just has the the two uh, fouls. They got you know, you and I got confused. Everyone did when they were giving out technicals and. Chewing gum and all kinds of things. <laughs> Clayton Shields, he's been hot. And that one was in and out. Spider Smith, fade away. Yes. Two-point game. The Lobos are back in it with just less than 10 minutes to go. Spider big Smith off. with 14. Excuse me, Mike. Big offensive rebound. And uh, Miners are going to make some more substitutions. Bill nearly double dribbled it. Kamani Jones Young. Carl Davis is their go to guy. Fajardo brings it back out. 11 on the shot clock. Here's Davis again. Watch the high screen. Spiller. He's missed all night, but not that time. Well, that was a setup. You could see it coming from here. Uh, Lobos, whenever the shot clock winds down, they're giving up too good a shot. I think everyone in the building thought Davis was going to take it. Out of bounds, and UTEP will play it in. It was a little sloppy. They've cut it to two. Now it's back up to five. And Kevin Beal will take a break. Jeremy Primazic will come in. Kavasi Franklin will take a break as Royce only checks in. Spiller, that basket was the first points off the bench for UTEP tonight. Less than nine to go. Lobos have been playing the last five minutes without Kenny Thomas. He has four fouls. Carl Davis posting up only. Premizic there, the lefty hit. That's just not good defense there. I mean, there's no reason for him to get that wide open. See if the Lobos can make another run down by seven. Way outside. Charles Spider Smith. Whistle foul New Mexico. Now it will be one and one. 
But Marty, I like he's at least aggressive going after the ball. And he had a shot at it. But <laughs> And now Kenny Thomas returns to uh, a few boos. Conright will sit. Shornstein checks in. He's been on the bench a while, and Clayton will take a break, too. 8.23 to go. UTEP leaves it 54-47. Primozic, he's a 65% free throw shooter. That time. Kenny Thomas has played pretty well in the past with four fouls. Let's see how he does tonight. Needs to be careful. They'll look, they're looking for him in there. Shot clock down to 15. Down to 10. Bubbles will go flat and clear it out for Spider. Needs to hurry. Not much time. Lost it out of bounds. Well, there's one second left on the shot clock. Miners did a good job of doubling off of Kenny Thomas. He had no place to go. Time out on the floor, 7.48 to go. The Miners in control now, up by seven. Northern Exposure, five nights a week on UPN 50. A different latitude, a different attitude. Northern Exposure weeknights at nine on UPN 50. UNM has now given up 10 three-point buckets to the Miners the most of the season. And Mike, if you'll remember, Ingles hit the big one when the Mexico was really creeping in. Right. And Spiller stepped up and hit a big one. They've been real momentum busters. Davis in and out on the three-pointer. And again, the Miners had position underneath. That's right now, 30 of UTEP's 54 points have been off the three-pointers. We got that by 10 times three, right? That was That's, I needed the calculator, but I got it figured out. Here's Gibson, oh, in the air, and he'll go to the line. David Gibson forced the action, and he'll shoot two. Well, Lobos, uh, they're going to shoot a lot of free throws because uh, soon they're going to be getting to shoot the two, and New Mexico needs to knock them down now. One and one. We've missed a couple of, actually two shots, but uh, Lobos have missed a couple of one on one. One and ones, and Gibson hits that one. That was a good looking free throw by David, too, one of his better ones. Gibson on the all tournament team of the Lobo Invitational. And he gets both to go down. Gibson with six. 54-49. Can we ever have a blowout? We, uh, I don't think we've had any this year, have we? I don't think so. I think we're but, getting their money's worth. But you know, when you're 14-2, and two, you can't complain too much, I guess. Ball is kicked. They'll reset the clock. Some other scores now to uh, tell you about. The one we have updated, San Diego State has now taken the lead over Air Force in the second half, up by six. Gibson around Carl Davis, and Gibson, uh, Spiller rather, will get it now. Good help by the Lobos, and we're going to have a travel inside. You know, Sharif Fajardo may be doing too much. As I, you know, sometimes, Mike, especially when you have a player like Fajardo who's not a great offensive player, and you're trying to pick up the fifth foul and you try and do too much, you've got to be careful because you can take some bad shots or get some turnovers. Well, the Lobos have kind of settled down a little bit as far as the turnovers are concerned. They had ten at half, so they only picked up four here. Shortstein open for three. Rainbow to Ingles in the paint. Wide open. We got it there. 6.28 and counting. Miners have been content to use a little clock, although Davis goes one-on-one -on -one there and Gibson holds. And Carl Davis will shoot one-on-one. -on -one. Number three on David Gibson. Okay, block it out. Here we go, Red. Here's Carl Davis now for the season. Davis shooting about 68.5% of the line. You'd think he would shoot a higher percentage. Uh, yeah. Whatever that's worth, but that's what I think. 
again, G. Ray Johnson subbing for Don Haskins, who has the flu, left the building, walked out on his own, but he has gone to the hospital uh, to get checked out. You do know he didn't feel well earlier in the day. The lead is seven. Only a short jumper, and Royce hits that one, and it's been a while for Royce. Well, I love us. Isn't our offense looking a lot more crisp than it was to start the game? Yes, in fact, it looks as good as it has in the last couple of games. Spiller and Spider. Spider would love to get the steal here. Not sure if we've had any dunks in this ball game. Rarity in a UTEP New Mexico game. Gibson out on Davis. We don't want to foul now. UTEP's worked the clock down. Don't foul. Make them make them rush a shot here. See it in the corner. That's Ingles. And we're going to have a hole. So one of the better shooters in the whack will go to the free throw line. That being Mark Ingles, 86% for the season. Now watch this. You see if they see, see the hole. Or you see the contact and uh, that's usually a, a no call. Well, Dave Bliss yelling that uh, to Tom Arrington saying this is college basketball. Ingles will get the second one, and he hits them both. 58-51, you know, the Lobos have played good defense, but they've been committing those fouls right as the clock winds down, as you mentioned. And whenever a team's going to work the clock like you tap, that's one of the ways you can bail them out. You shouldn't do that. Lobos trying to go to Thomas. Only they'll set it back up or try to bat it away out of bounds. Lobos with 11 seconds left on the clock will play it in. They'll want to run a very aggressive out of bounds play because there's not much time once you get it in to get a shot. So they'll run one of the ones uh, that they have designated, you know, spider, quick hitter, get a shot. Dave Bliss calls the 20-second timeout. They'll set up a play here. Don't forget that uh, the Lazarus man coming up after the ball game tonight, starring Robert Urich. And we've got a little bit of sports for you. We talked about the Rockies earlier on UPN 50. We have uh, the coaches show with Dave Bliss. Uh, Sunday nights uh, at 10, uh, 10 o'clock. At 10.30, we've got the George Michael Sports Machine. Join us for that. One-on-one -on -one with Dave Bliss. Uh, I had my times mixed up. Dave Bliss at 10.30, the Sports Machine at 10, only on UPN 50. Mexico playing it in. Spider Smith with it. He's got some room on the baseline. Not quite strong enough, but he'll shoot two. I'm not sure who they... I don't know. That foul caught on... I thought Fajardo. it was on... I thought it was Beal, but it is not. It is uh, Fajardo. And for Charles Smith, he'll be going to the free throw line for the first time tonight. Smith is shooting 83% at the line on the road, which is pretty amazing. Yeah, that's usually a tougher place. Uh, UTEP just put in Kamani Jones Young in place of Spiller. They're trying to get a little more athletic. Charles Smith is out in, Clayton Shields is in, and, and Smith in the whack. Oh, a near turnover here by UTEP. And let's see what happens. Davis driving in, fade away. In and out, knocked out of bounds, and the Lobos will play it in. I thought it was off Kenny Thomas. And the Lobos will play it in, down 58 to 53. Colorado State, it's a final, upsetting BYU in Provo, 78-76. And BYU comes into the pit on Thursday. Inside, Kenny Thomas, it's batted. Tip to Shields. And we're going to have a foul. And that'll be two shots, and also, I think that may be four on Kamani Jones Young. We'll double check on the number of fouls, Nelson, where there may be nine on UTEP, which would make it a one on one and one. Well, I haven't been, I was, I was right, I was 50 50. I got the number of fouls on Jones Young as four, and I was wrong on the other. You can't beat that. <laughs> if you're in the big leagues, you're a Hall of Famer, Nelly. 
Now, I mentioned earlier, I was trying to make a point. Charles Smith, until this game, had just shot eight free throws in the WAC. Clayton Shields only 12 in the WAC. And those guys need to get to the line more. Shields is doing it tonight. Clayton Shields leading score, or make that second leading score for New Mexico with 13. Charles Smith has 16. And look up at the clock, and it's a three-point game. A little trapping defense now for the Lobos to, to bury it. Monty Jones Young double team. Miners getting a little bit careless. Here comes Olney with the steal. Four on one. And he's fouled. He'll put it up and let's see what they do. And I guess it doesn't matter whether it's a two-shot foul or not. Well, it could be an intentional foul. Lobos would get two and the ball, but uh, I think they, the refs used all of those earlier. Here's the steal, and we'll look at that as we head to a break. Timeout UTEP. The Lobos have a chance to cut it to one. Mexico Dodge dealer. UTEP up by three, but Royce only at the line to shoot two. Dave Bliss against UTEP in his career, 12 and seven. One of those wins came when Coach Bliss was at SMU. Not very many coaches with a winning percentage over the bear. Not very many. Only hits the first one. Royce with eight points, four in each half. That one, you could see the rotation was off. So it remains a two-point game. Crunch time. Let's throw a cliche up there, because that's what it is. Cross-court pass. Lobos need to make sure they don't leave a shooter that's hot like an Ingles. We have like a whistle and a foul on Clayton Shields. I think that's going to be four on Shields. And what that does, it does stop the clock, and it sends Carl Davis to the line. And Jojo Garcia has returned for the first time, I think, since that technical foul sequence we saw considerably earlier. Yeah, and he had four fouls, and the way UTEP was playing, they just thought they'd save him. Davis now three of three at the line. Well, we're going to see a lot of free throws down the stretch. You know, one of the things that'll be who shoots them will be very important. Lobos want to have their better guns at the line, and UTEP, the same for them. Well, the Miners have had their best player shooting. Davis and Engel. 60-56, our score. Lobos trailed by 17 in the first half. Charles Smith running one-hander is good. The Spider-Man does it again. Charles Smith with 18. Lobos with that 1-3-1, a little trapping defense. UTEP struggled and gave him a turnover earlier. Kenny Thomas needs to be careful inside. There's Garcia. Nice job by Clayton Shields. Engels left alone. Lobos can tie or take the lead. Gibson pushing it. Fakes, goes in, bumps. Can't quite get it, but he'll get two. Ooh, Coach Bliss was yelling. He wanted that one uh, to go down. That's three now on Carl Davis. I like the move here by Gibson. That's something. That's kind of what David was wanting to do, Mike, at the Wyoming game. Get down there quick before they set up their defense. Gibson to try the second one now. 3.33 to go. Regulation. Gibson slides the second one down. He has seven. And the Lobos are nipping into that lead one point a trip. Angles alone. Smith hustles over. In the corner, Beal. Scrambling defense. In the corner, Davis. Kicked out of bounds and... UTEP will play it in. Folks here wanted a foul on Shields, but again, he's got four. That's right, and that would have been his fifth. Uh, whenever you're in a trap, you still have to work and get good position so you can get, get the rebound. Good screen off the inbounds. Holy fights for it. It's funny, UTEP works the clock, but then they run an out-of-bounds play, take a shot in two seconds. Crowd on their feet here. Let's see if the Lobos can silence them. Gibson looking for help, throws it away. David gets in trouble when he goes baseline. 
Yeah, he, he has to make sure that he has someone open before he gets up in the air unless he has an open shot. Lobos trail it by one, 60-59. Don't want to send UTEP to the foul line. And he needs to be careful. Kenny Thomas, four fouls for him. Shields with four. Amani jones yon stripped away. And you probably heard that. Dave Lewis right next to us. Calls a timeout with 2.14 to go. We'll take it with the Miners up by one. He against San Diego State. New Mexico wins by six against Hawaii. Wyoming wins by three. And then the Lobos win by two at Colorado State. All of them down to the last 30 seconds. And I tell you what, in the Air Force game, you can throw it in. Yeah. If it was decided in the last two and a half minutes. Lobos down by one with the ball. You see the time remaining in regulation. Lobos are going to want to get Spider the ball and have him create. See what he can do now. Has some room. He is fouled. Can't get the shot. But he'll go to the line. And that was on Jojo Garcia. And he is walking to the sidelines with his fifth. Well, that's also something that can work uh, for the Lobos for momentum. Even though... Uh, Hardo is playing good. Just the fact that you lose your starting center sometimes affects you. Right. He's done with his nine points. We're tied. The last tie in this ball game. You remember what it was? 0-0. Uh, zero, zero. You got it. The last Lobo lead. Not yet. Well, it's too early, Mike. 60, 60, 150 left. Well, UTEP, uh, they want to try and uh, shorten this game. Uh, that sometimes can affect your team's confidence. It makes them think, look, we're scared to play these guys. We want to take air out of the ball. And also, they haven't been getting good shots as they wind it down. Nine seconds on the shot clock. Carl Davis looking for help. Watch the screen. Down to four. Fakes. Two. It's blocked partially. And will stop the clock. The Lobos will get the ball. The shot clock expired. And that was good defense that time. Lobos did a good job of moving their feet. Uh, UTEP, they're only going to attack you the last 10 seconds. G. Ray Johnson taking over for Don Haskins, who left because he has the flu, not feeling well. We wish him nothing but the best. Up for the Hall of Fame this year, man. I hope he gets in. He deserves it. Absolutely. Spider loses it somehow to Kenny Thomas, who dunks it. The first dunk of the game and the first lead for New Mexico. 62-60, a minute left, Nelson. That was really heads-up play. Spider just trips and falls. Smart enough to make the good pass. UTEP standing around a little bit. Here's Carl Davis. Good job by David Gibson. Kamani jones Young. Reverse. No good. Kenny Thomas has the rebound with 36 seconds left. Get it to a guy who can shoot those free throws. Spider Royce Kenny. Off Oli's foot. Off Oli's foot with 26 seconds left. UTEP has a chance now to tie or take the lead. A million dollar surface and he dribbles it off a pair of hundred dollar sneakers. Let's see what happens now. 19 to go. Regulation. Lobos lead by two. Kamani Jones Young. Short. Shields with the rebound. Trying to get it out of there. We'll have a whistle and a foul with 8.4 seconds left. Clayton Shields will go to the line. That's a foul on Kevin Bill, Mike. And that's going to be a four on him. Kenny does a good job of just... Kind of stand out of the way. Clayton goes up, gets the rebound. Two big free throws here. They're going to ice him, look for UTEP to call a timeout, Mike Powers. And that's exactly what they're doing with 20, with 8.4 seconds to go. Do I need to bring up the last time Clayton Shields went to the free throw line in a game-winning situation? Uh, he, he was clutch. <laughs> he was Mr. Clutch. He missed the two free throws at New Mexico State, but hit the 55-footer. That's what I mean, Mr. Clutch. I mean, he was setting it up. Now, the neat thing here is he's got two free throws. If he makes one, Lobos are in really good position. If he misses them both, 
they can, uh, in a bind, but if he can make them both, it'll ice the game. And look at this what pass. What a play. What a play by Charles Smith. I like the fact that Kenny doesn't try and dribble it. He goes, enough dribbling, guys. I'm taking it home. A lot of people have complained or at least pointed out that Charles Smith is a better first-half player than a second-half player, at least first half of the season. Tonight, three points in the first half, 16 when it counters the second half, total of 19 in the game. New Mexico has won six of seven here, or rather against UTEP. In fact, they'd won six in a row at one point before the last game between these two in this building last year. A uh, one uh, game won by the Miners, very close. Uh, if we could get a check on the timeout situation, that would be uh, very important because uh, the Miners, uh, if they have timeouts, uh, they may want to take one, especially uh, if they're only down two or three to set up some play. Shields at the line to shoot two, just kind of shaking his head up there. Carl Davis is talking to him. Lobos up by two, 8.4 ticks left. Nothing, nothing but nylon. And now, UTEP calls another timeout. It's a three-point game. It's a 20-second timeout. We'll keep it right here. 63-60. The next one is huge. Yeah, and, and that's a good timeout by G. Ray Johnson because you want to go ahead and try and ice Clayton as much as you can because the difference between three and four is the game. You don't need another timeout, even if they don't have one, to set up a play if you're down four. It's too late. Dave Bliss. 14-2 at the New Mexico Lobos. 4-2 in the WAC, trying to pick up a third WAC road win. And you can see Clayton there talking to Carl Davis. This would be huge. Strokes it down, both. Timeout, New Mexico. Good timeout, Mike. Lobos this way, they can get back set their defense they can talk about obviously you don't want to foul someone shooting a four you don't even want to foul someone shooting a two because you want to keep that clock going uh, make them take a quick shot uh, with a hand up or I mean not don't let them take a quick shot you want to make them you know make a couple of passes then by the time they launch it you know, the game will basically be over with the timeout situation New Mexico with one full timeout left UTEP with one full timeout neither team with a 20. This is where you need to play smart. You have the game, you have a chance to salt it away. Now this is something that you know, change in the rules. Used to, on a made bucket, the clock would continue to run, but automatically the last minute of the game, it stops. So if UTEP can get a quick bucket, the clock will stop immediately and they can foul on the inbounds. You know, I hate that rule tonight. <laughs> Look at the uh, spirit squad for New Mexico. Lobo Louie is here. The cheerleaders in the chaparrales, as well as a number of Lobo fans uh, up in the outer reaches, which is kind of where you get stuck when you're the visiting uh, fan section. Mike, you don't, you don't really realize it because New Mexico just has 64 points. But the Lobos have scored 46 points against uh, the defense, the UTEP, and a team that's trying to take air out of the ball. That's a lot of in, points. In the second half? Right. Right. Here we go. Carl Davis. He'll put up a three-pointer. No good. It's tipped around. This one will count. It's no good. Does not matter. The Lobos have done it. Folks, they were down 30 to 13 in the first half, and they have fought back to take the victory by a score of 64-60. Congratulations to Coach Dave Bliss and Charles Smith. Big win for New Mexico, and there's your hero down the stretch, Clayton Shields, as the Lobos win it 5-4. We'll be right back. Choose from the state's most extensive... Fans, I'm Van Tate. And from the Marriott Center in Provo, Utah, it's Lobo basketball on you. And we are underway. Tip is controlled by BYU. Lobo starting out in a 2-3 zone. 
Ruffner baseline, hits the little pull-up. Little surprised to see that zone. Well, New Mexico generally known for man-to-man, -man, but these two coaches, I think they're going to use a lot of tricks tonight trying to keep the other team off balance. Spider Smith drives the baseline, cut off there. Gibson now, Shortstein inside. Gibson has some room, and he gets it to go. Man, Roberts was all over that one. I don't know how he snuck it by there. We're tied at two all. Your turnover by Whiteout. And now the Lobos go back to Mandalay. Some confusion. Whiteout takes the jump shot. I think maybe half the team went to man to man, Mike, and, and half stayed in the zone. Whiteout was left wide open. No one on him. It's 4 2 BYU. Goes down low. Jump hook from the baseline. Not the roll that time. Tough angle to hit that jump hook. That's what I was going to say. If you're going to steal my line. 